What is up, Mandy? Hi, Daisy, Gail, and Havis. Hi, Lena. Hi, Amanda and Lauren. I love it. Holly, Deb Hillard, of course, Miriam. You guys, we are literally 48 hours away from being in a food coma. How excited are we? I mean, it's coming. I hope everyone has big plans, and if not big plans, fun solo plans, because let's be honest, we've all had the holiday solo, and those could be really fun too. Um, I would love to know, just because this is our last class, we know, trust me, we know not to put a class on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving, but we would love to know what you guys are cooking up. I, I just, I'm so curious, especially some of our regulars who come on every class, I'd love to know. I see so many new faces. Please put it in the chat. I want to call out, what are you guys making? What do you have to make that makes Thanksgiving what it is? Ooh, chicken thighs. Nice. Evelyn from Chicago. I love it. What else are you guys making? Throw it in the chat. Ooh, Deb, lamb. Brownies. Oh, that's a great idea. Deep fried turkey. Gail, me too. I'm going fried this year. Hot pot. Madeline, that's genius. Oh, oh my God. I love it. Squash salad. Miriam, me too. You guys, we have so much of the same stuff. I love it. Well, welcome. Um, if we haven't met yet, I'm Joel Gamron. I'm the head chef and founder here at Homemade. Um, this is all meant to be a two-way conversation. So yes, I'm going to be cooking. Yes, we're going to show one of our amazing partners today, Molto. But really, this is a two-way conversation. We are here to answer questions. We want to hear your stories. We want to hear your comments. And you can do that if you share your screen. So I can see my buddy Lena. I can see Judith. I can see Kayla and Valerie. But if I can't see you, you unfortunately cannot raise your hand and chat with me. So if you're interested in interacting with me and chatting with me in real time, I would love it. Show your screen. You do not need to be cooking along. If that is not your jam, because we do have a lot of people signed up for tonight's class, we do have Chef Kaya in the chat. Kaya, she is a total badass. She's our newest chef. And she's coming out with your first class in like three weeks, Kaya? Two weeks? Solo class? Like two weeks. She's a pastry chef. Is your first class the maple crepe cake? Ooh, she's going to make pot de creme. Ooh, it's going to be good. She's an incredible pastry chef, which I am not. So we are thrilled to have her on the team. Um, but the way this works, like I said, it's completely your show as much as it is ours. We've got different camera angles, so you'll be able to see inside to the side. And then, of course, the moneymaker right here, in case you just missed me. Um, but today we are making something that I feel is such a delight, such an easy win, and so impressive. We are making homemade gnocchi. I have to just turn around. I'm so excited. I usually don't do a full 360. That was a very excited 360 for me. I love gnocchi, not just any gnocchi. This is stuffed with spinach. We're using cream cheese, but you could use soft goat milk cheese cotta, any cheese you want. Once you learn how to stuff a gnocchi, you'll never look at gnocchi the same. Let's just call a spade a spade. There's a lot of technique to this. There's a lot to break down, but we're going to go through it step by step. So hopefully you can really, really feel confident. And I will say, you're probably thinking to yourself, what? I can't even think about gnocchi. I've got turkey in the fridge. Let me tell you, the base to this recipe is mashed potatoes. And Every single weekend I can remember after Thanksgiving, I made gnocchi with leftover mashed potatoes. So if you're going to make mashed potatoes this year, clue in, because this is going to be a phenomenal recipe for you to repurpose those puppies. All right. So first and foremost, did I fly in time to 2100? And is this the way that we cook now in the future? No, I don't have a time machine. I wish I did. But this is a very, very big friend of ours in the kitchen. So this is Molto. We're going to be cooking in it today. Now, we don't always do this at Homemade. Typically, we just cook on stoves and with normal appliances. But what's really cool about Molto and why we teamed up with them, and it's not the future of cooking because it's been around for many, many years in places like Europe and Asia, they cook like this. They have much smaller uh, footprints at home in a lot of ways, and so they're very used to cooking in kind of one little container here. But um, what's really rad about it is it replaces up to 15 appliances in the kitchen. So saute pans, um, stock pots, steamers, sous vide, blenders, 
food processors. It's all in one. So that's why we love it. It's really cool. It's connected to this little tablet here. At first you're like, wait, so this cooks to that. It takes like a couple of days, a handful of days to get used to it. But this is now our sixth class. We've gotten so much positive feedback from you guys around this. Everyone says, yes, it's a break, big price tag. It, it runs about a thousand bucks. But I will say, and I'm just going to show you guys you know, a, a different view here. We've got some really, really, really cool benefits. So first and foremost, if you use the promo gift with HM, that's gift with HM, you get $80 off. So gift with HM, all caps, that's number one. And number two, you get a free, on Black Friday, $210 bowl. So you got to do this Black Friday situation. That's huge, plus the discount, the 80 bucks. So you could save like 300 bones. I would do it. Watch the class, participate in the class, make your own call. But let's get cooking. So first and foremost, we need to boil potatoes. Now when it comes to potatoes for gnocchi, I really prefer Yukon Golds, those creamy, beautiful, kind of buttery potatoes. Idaho russets are a little dry for me. They're starchy, they work, but I just find that you get way more fluff and a little bit more moist with these potatoes. They hold their shape a little bit more when it comes to the dough. Does anyone know what gnocchi means when it comes to the translation? You can Google it. I'm cool. Throw it in the chat. Raise your hands. What does gnocchi mean? Let's see. No one in the chat telling me no one knows? Jessica. Okay, Jessica Gotsman. Can we unmute? I'm curious. You see him right, right there? Kind of go down the middle, Jessica. Right there. Yep. Ask to unmute. Sweet. What does it mean? Uh, doesn't it mean lump? Yes. Yes. And I don't know if your name's Jessica, but I preach no, it. I'm Aaron. You're Aaron. All right. You're on Jessica's computer. I love it. Aaron, thank you. Gnocchi means lump. So sexy. Don't you want to just eat it? It's just like, who? What? Any lump is a gnocchi. So it is like a little dumpling. It's a potato dumpling. And it is kind of served like a pasta in Italy. So first and foremost, what's really cool about this is the molto was used as a scale. So you can see right now, if I put some weight on this, check it out. <laughs> That's a little bit too much weight. I maxed it out. But you can see it changes with how I added. So I literally scaled out my flour, my cheese, everything you want to kind of pre-measure for this, this is your scale, which I love. It also kind of takes you through the recipe. So it tells you what to do first. This told me to clean, scrub, cut my potatoes, and then steam them. We already did that. So the next step is really we're going to make this dough. And you don't need, obviously, the molten to make the dough. You can do this in a food processor. Again, though, we just saved a steamer. We saved so much, a scale. So, you know, we're on our third appliance already. But to make this dough, it couldn't be more easy. I take these potatoes, which are already steamed. We steam them for about 20 minutes until they kind of just break apart like this. You can see I used one hand to do that. I dump them in. Easy. I crack an egg right over those spuds. Okay, and then I've got some double zero flour. Can anyone tell me what double zero flour is, why that's important for making gnocchi? You can absolutely, by the way, use all purpose flour, but we're using double zero. Why? Has anyone ever heard of double zero? Anything come in? Super refined. Kara, thank you. Kaya, anything in the chat I need to be aware of with that question? No, not really, but there are some hands raised. Yeah, Michael, you want to let let Michael take the double zero. I'm curious to hear what Michael says here. By the way, when Michael talks, I'm going to add some nutmeg. Whenever I talk, people add something. Because <laughs> I don't add a lot. Uh, basically, it's an Italian descriptor for very fine flour. It's yes. what's often used in pizza. Etc., and you can have zero, but double zero is the finest. Thank you, Michael. You're the man. Exactly. It's almost like ground when you feel it, 
It feels like velvet. And it makes for incredible pizzas, really light and crispy, beautiful pastas and, and gnocchis like this. So I like it if you can find it. Usually you find it at like the, the more high-end stores. Whole Foods has it. A lot of the retailers have it. But if you can find Double Zero, great. If you can't, all-purpose is totally fine. Like I said, we grated in a little bit of nutmeg and now some Parmesan cheese. And if you know me, you know... I don't go buy the Parmesan cheese that's already grated. We gotta grade this in any recipe we are doing on the microplane. And when you look for Parm, you look for that stamp. That stamp is like legitimacy. You don't see it, that's not Parm, that's fake. That's why I don't buy the ground up stuff anyways. It's like you don't know if it's real or fake. This means it's from Parma, it's from Italy. It's like saying champagne. Is it sparkling wine or champagne? To me, it is not Parmesan unless it has this rind. It has to have those stamps on it. So definitely go get that from the store. All right. On the lid we go. And then as simply as this, check this out. I'm going to kind of make sure you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing here. But literally, you just go start. And it will say 45 seconds. And at this point, you guys can't see inside the machine kind of, you can see the blade moving and it's mixing our potatoes. It's, you don't have to rice them. You don't have to do any of that. It's literally just mixing it all into a perfect dough. And what I love about this, you can see there's about 20 seconds left, is the molto allows it to the perfect degree, to the perfect amount, not to overmix it, right? If you're doing this by hand, you could be pulsing this and it will be really tough. You'll overwork the gluten. But by putting it here on a timer, it allows it to kind of just be enough. Let's go for a question. So we have Lizard and MJ raising their hands. Yeah. Lizard, we just got to see your face in order to unmute you. But MJ, let's do it. Oh, hi. Thank you. So is pastry flour the same as double zero flour? That's a great question, MJ. Thank you for asking that. So. Pastry flour feels like it in your fingers because it's so soft, but pastry flour has way less protein. So that makes it way more supple, meaning like things for cakes, we don't want those to be bouncy. We want those to just chew through. So they kind of remove the protein from it, making it very, very low in gluten. They don't do that for double zero flour. So this is just normal flour ground really, really fine, but they do feel very similar. They just have different amount of protein. Does that make sense? Cool. Sweet. Great question. Love that. All right. Let's take a look at our dough. Yes. So you can see it kind of ground this up. And I'm just going to pour this into a bowl here. Oh, my gosh. It's perfect. This is how you want your dough looking. All right. You don't want it overly wet. You don't want it overly dry. You just want it to this point of like almost it looks like couscous. I know that's a really weird like comparison, but you want to be able to kind of pick it up, squeeze it, and you have this beautiful ball that you can roll out. Isn't that great? So the recipe, you know, I like to kind of take it onto my counter at this point. And as much as I love the molto, I love my hands the most in the kitchen. So I just get in there, give it a little bit of a knead, and just kind of bring this together. It's kind of amazing how magic that is, how it just kind of comes together like a dough like that. But what you're left with is this really nice dough. And this you want to let rest for about 30 minutes in the fridge. Of course, we have one that's already rested. We'll talk about that. But really, really simple. Really, really simple. So I'm going to take this into a bowl, throw some plastic wrap over the top of it. We have one that's already rested, but I want to answer any questions you guys might have on the actual dough itself. I know it's pretty easy, but how are we doing? Kaya, everything there's, good out there? No, there's actually not much questions today. Oh, just kidding. Hand raised. Hand raised. Valerie, talk to me, girl. So right now, if the dough, uh, I mean, if we don't have this appliance, can we just throw it in the mixer? Yeah, just throw it in the mixer until it comes together. And then again, 
Valerie, I always like to kind of dump it out on the counter and knead it a little bit just so it comes together. Okay. And how much flour did you use? We used five and a half ounces. Five and a half ounces. Yeah. Thank you. Miriam. Hi, Joel. Can you hear me? Yeah. How are you? Um, The reason we're not able to ask questions is that chat has been disabled. And there's all we're seeing are... Kaya and Kara talking yeah. and schedule someone's schedules on there. Okay. Good to time, know. So. We so, will check um, it out. Thank you. Okay. And I just have a, um, just a sort of a family remembrance. Uh, my, my late mother did a version of gnocchi. We're not Italian. We're Jewish. And uh, she did things called uh, knizzles, like yes. little, for, like, you know, pinching. And she'd make them, they look like gnocchi with the potatoes. But she'd make caramelized uh, onions on the side. And then when the gnocchi were cooked, she'd throw them in with the caramelized onions. And we'd use it as a side dish to like brisket or to a roast chicken or something. Oh, my like gosh. Yeah. Location. It's amazing when you learn about these dishes, like how much there's so much synergy with other cultures. I love that. Okay. Will you DM the name of that dish to Kaya? I just want to look it up after this. I'm curious. I don't know. I mean, it was her term. I think it was basically the same thing. It wasn't a dish. I mean, it was just... Yeah, it's like a little potato dumpling. Here. Yeah. Okay, I can try doing that. If not, also, you asked, wanted me to email you, and but I didn't hear back from you, so I don't know what the story is on that. Oh, Something okay. Last week about... Yeah, doing- George, okay. George will pass it along. He's giving me all the names this week. Okay, great. I don't yeah. know what it's for. Thanks, but, Miriam. Yeah, it looks like the chat's up now. It's finally fixed. Thanks for bringing it up. Thanks to you. Okay, you're welcome. See Bye. you, buddy. Happy Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you, Miriam. So you can see there's a little bit of schmutz left into, the, uh, into here. You can get rid of it or leave it. I leave it because we're going to eat this anyway. So if there's a little bit in there, not the end of the world. I add a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm going to put on the lid. And no joke, this is going to chop the garlic for me. So I'm literally just going to press start. And literally in five seconds, you can hear it. It's just ground the garlic for me. So you just saved a knife. You just saved so much, right? Mm, Just pulverized garlic. Look at that. And now I'm going to add some olive oil. This is at this point, you can do this in a saute pan at home. But when you have the molto, it's all doing it here. It's going to actually cook the spinach, the garlic all together. And I'm going to add a couple of handfuls of spinach. Now, this is going to be our filling, you guys. So we have the dough. We're then going to fold in this filling. So lid goes back on top. We're on to the next step. I love that this kind of just tells you the steps. And at this point, I just want you guys to be able to see this again. It's sauteing. So it's telling you the temperature of the actual machine itself. It's telling you how much longer you have. So it takes out all the guesswork. You know, at home, at this point, I'd be chopping the garlic. I'd have a pan. I'd be adding oil to the pan, adding the garlic and everything. I have to sit and watch it. With the molto, you're kind of just hanging out. I dig it. Ooh, it smells so good. So just to kind of reiterate, we've got our dough. It's been hanging out just here on the side. Okay? Then we've got our filling, garlic, garlic a little bit of olive oil, and our spinach. Now to this, we're going to make it kind of creamy, and we're going to add some cream cheese. If you don't do cream cheese, like any vegan cheese will work. So like a nut cheese, you know, they make these cashew cheeses now that are actually delicious. Um, You can use those. If you don't dig cream cheese, you can go ricotta, you can do mozzarella, you can do so many different things, cheddars. But I'm just going to let this spinach almost wilt down just for a little bit. Again, at home, if, you, if you're not cooking with the molto, I'm just in a pan with some olive oil, garlic, and spinach, just wilting it down. And this is almost like ready to go. It's literally chopping and cooking at the same time. It's pretty sweet. How are we doing out there, Miss Kaya? We are doing pretty good. All right. Good, good, good. Oh, there was one question, though, about being able to use cauliflower instead of potatoes. Oh, yeah. You can use cauliflower instead of potatoes in this if you're trying to watch the carbs. Um, The rule of thumb is you want to double the flour. So it's going to need more flour, I know, because it's kind of like you tried to save the carbs (laughs) by using, 
you know, but you need more flour because there's so much moisture in cauliflower. So if you're not doing potatoes, you can absolutely, and by the way, potatoes have a lot of sugar in them, so it does sometimes make sense to bust out the cauliflower, but I love cauliflower gnocchi, absolutely. And some people will be like, that's not authentic. It's a lump, guys. It is authentic. If it's a lump, it's a gnocchi. That's all you got to know. All right, so this is sautéing. We have our cream cheese on standby. I want to kind of just walk you through so you're all prepared how we're going to stuff this. So we're going to roll out the dough. You really, the dough is so soft, you don't need a rolling pin. You can just use your hands. We're going to roll it out, and then we're going to pipe this filling in it and then roll it over, almost like sushi. So if you have ever used a piping bag before, they look like this, like a little gnome hat. It's cute. And... They cost nothing. I mean, this is like probably 10 cents. You can get a big roll of them. If you don't have this, you can use a Ziploc bag or something like that to pipe it. But a great trick is to grab a little cup. I got fancy. I felt like getting fancy. And I put my hand inside the bag and I stuff that into the cup. And then I kind of unroll the bag over the top of the cup. This is the easiest way to stuff a pastry bag. So you kind of invert it into the cup and then we're just going to dump the spinach and all of our cream cheese mixture in there and it just makes it so much easier to handle. So we'll talk about that in a sec. At this point, it needs a couple more minutes but I feel like it's in a really good spot. So I'm going to open it up, take a little look and that's the cool thing about Molto. You can follow the steps or you can just do it yourself. You can use kind of your chef inclination. All right, so you can see the spinach has started to really wilt down, and at this point, I'm going to add my cream cheese. So if, again, if you're doing this on the stove, you can add your cream cheese, and you're in good shape. All right, like that, that, and then on with the lid. And what this is going to do is blend the cream cheese with the garlic and the spinach, making it incredibly beautiful. And I might do a couple of these, but you can kind of see the blending happening in there. I know it's so hard on the camera. What's also really cool is it comes with this great spatula. I love it. This little hook helps you lift things out of the hot water if you're poaching or boiling in there. And then, of course, this side is kind of your spatula to scrape things down into the actual bowl itself. How are we doing on, like, the, the, pro, like the thought process behind this thing? Is this making sense to everyone? I mean... You guys realize that this is a stove, a blender. It is all cooking here, connected to here. I could be sitting on my butt on the couch, and this thing is just doing it for me. I mean, that's kind of nuts. So in that way, it is kind of the future, but it's also like, man, Asia and Europe, all these cultures that have been cooking like this for so many years, where have we been? Where have we been? All right, take a look at this cream cheese mixture. Yeah, look at that. And guys, this is live. We're not like trading in magic swaps and things like this. Like this is really happening right now. I mean, that's so cool. By the way, one big trick I have um, for the holidays coming up. If you are doing like cream spinach or any greens, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, I don't know what you're serving as a vegetable side. Nutmeg, like what we've added to this. It's everything. It's everything. They're like soulmates. Grade a little bit of nutmeg over the top of your greens. People are going to be like, what did you add to this? Why is this so much better than mine? Don't tell them. Don't you tell them I told you about that pixie dust. But that is nutmeg. Okay? Nutmeg is the key. All right. So now we have this cute little cup and we don't even have to hold it. And then you can just go in there and just start filling it up with your mixture. Really, really simple. I mean, it's so hard to do this when you don't have it lined up on the cup like that. I'm not going to lie. It's just like you feel like you're juggling too many different things. But just to scrape it all in like that, super, super simple. And I don't need to do all this, but I do want to show you guys a really cool trick. All right. Come on. Get off. The there you go. So at this point, you can kind of grab your little mixture here. Look how beautiful that looks. And then a great trick is to lay it 
right here on your counter. And then I grab this. This is a bench scraper. These cost literally a dollar. But you can just use the side of your hand, too. And I kind of just angle it, and I just push all the batter. So if you're piping for a cake or anything, you can do the same technique. Push it all towards the end. Obviously, it's not going to go towards the end end until we open it. And give it a little bit of air. But this is kind of what you're looking for. This beautiful filling that's going to go in the gnocchi itself. You could pipe this into my mouth. I'll be very happy. Very, very happy. This does not need to go straight into the gnocchi. It can go right in the gullet. Typically, you do want to let this chill just because like hot cream cheese is just like, it's kind of like cream at this point. So it needs to kind of firm back up. So we do have one that's chilled out. But if you want to go for it, hey, it's your kitchen, baby. Make it as messy as you want. All right, so I'm going to kind of shift everything to the side here because we're going to get a little bit messy. Now, again, like the Molto, it's such, a time, it's such a space saver, but also a time saver. The idea that it multitasks for you, it times for you, it lets you know when things are done is just so key to the win here. But I'm going to make some space, and I'm actually going to start working with the dough. So I... You know, when we first made that dough, we let it rest for about 15, 20 minutes in the fridge. So, where's my dough? I've got a couple here that already have rested. I cut it into two, so you guys can see. Just little dough balls. They're very supple, very soft. Like if I put my finger into them, it doesn't bounce back. You don't want it to bounce back. That means it's too springy, there's too much gluten. So, I have a little bit of extra flour on standby, just in case you need some for the counter, whatever. And kind of like a pizza, honestly, you kind of want to just start pancaking it out. That's a real term that I just made up. It's called pancaking. I do it with Play-Doh, with my kid. And you just want to kind of make a nice round circle like that. It doesn't have to be a circle, it can be more of like an oval. But you just kind of want to open it up. This looks great. Then you grab your filling, that spinach cream cheese filling, and you just kind of start creating a layer right there. Look at that. No need to overfill it, just enough to make it happen. And then you can kind of use an edge. You can use your bench scraper if you do have that. And I kind of get underneath of it and just fold. Just like that. And then I just give it another whoop and start shaping it into a little log. So I'm going to do that again before I chop this. But your goal is to kind of have a nice rustic little potato dumpling stuffed log. All right, let's do it again just so you guys can see. And I'll keep on this angle. I think this is the best one. But let me know if you guys need a different option. By the way, whenever I see this, I always draw a little smiley face. I don't know if you guys can see that, but whenever I see a pile of flour, it makes me happy. There we go. All right. Pancake it out. Again, do not need to go for a perfect circle. You're kind of going for more of an oval here. We grab our filling, give it a little bit of a zhuzh. You can go with more filling than I'm going with, by the way. It doesn't have to be this little bit. I just like enough to kind of complement the dumpling. Get underneath of it with a bench scraper or a knife, something with an edge, and then whoop, over the top. And just kind of use your fingers and create this nice little snake almost. I was making Play-Doh Hala this morning, actually, so I'm very, very confident in my snake making abilities. All right, these look great. I want to pause here. Kaya, any questions from the crew? Anyone outside, throw it in the chat, raise your hand. I just don't want to move on until we kind of all feel aligned with that step because that was kind of a tricky one. So um, there's some people asking how thick you made your little pancake. Oh, that's a good question. I would say it was about half an inch thick. Actually, no, that's, there's no way it was half an inch thick. I'm going to say quarter inch thick. So probably the double the thickness of your knife. So if you go get your knife, about double that thickness. It doesn't have to be razor thin at all. 
We also had a few questions on if you could save the dough like overnight or for a couple days. Mm, and then that's also, a great question. Yeah, and then also if you freeze your little gnocchis, if you need to wait for them to thaw before you cook them. Great question. All right, let's talk about the first one. So you, this is kind of sound kind of weird, but it, actually it's really not. So you want to make this dough the same day you're going to shape it and stuff it. You do not need to make it the same day that you're going to cook it. But if I was to freeze or put this in the fridge, this dough ball in the fridge that we just made, tomorrow you would wake up. I'm not kidding. It will be green. It will be green. You'll be like, I know a lot of you are like, what? The egg in, in any dough can overnight oxidize and kind of turn it green. It doesn't mean it's unsafe to eat, but it does look very teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Like it looks green. So like pasta doughs, doughs with eggs in it, I always roll it, either cook it or shape it that day. Now, with that said, freezing it is fine. I would never freeze this dough whole like this. It's very hard to dethaw, but I would freeze it in the yolky form. So this next stage, once we create those little dumplings, then you can throw it on a sheet tray, throw it in the freezer, get them really hard, and put them in little baggies and bust them out whenever you want. Now, if you are going to bust it out and boil them for dinner, you do not need to dethaw them. They can go right from the freezer into the water, or today we're going right into the pan. So you can skip the water altogether. But absolutely do not, and that goes for any pasta. If you have frozen pasta in the fridge, it goes right into the water, boil it up, and it's good to go. Cool? All right. Let's take a look inside these puppies, shall we? So we've got our two beautiful little logs here, and you just start cutting them into bite-sized pieces. And what you start to see is that little hint of spinach and green. So you just kind of create, again, these are lumps. Do not worry about them looking perfect. They should look imperfect, in fact. But you just want to cut little bite-sized dumplings. I like to add a little bit more flour over the top just so they don't stick to the board or to each other. And I mean, I'm just going to hold one up so you guys can see. Biting into that, get out of town. It explodes in your mouth. It's delicious. Now, a lot of people with gnocchi, and you do not need to do this. Like, I'm calling it out right now. In fact, with stuffed gnocchi, it's really tough. But to get those ridges, you can just take a fork, turn it upside down like this, and just roll the gnocchi. And you get those little edges, those cute little edges. The only reason why you would do that is so it clings to sauce a little bit more. But we don't really have a sauce today because you don't really need one. So kind of not necessary. All right, let's get the next one. Let's see inside this puppy. Oh, yeah. So I'm just cutting... Again, bite size. I don't care if you make them bigger than this, smaller than this. Your kitchen. Homemade is about the way you see it, not the way I see it. Nothing like that. Now, this recipe is part of our buddy Jamie's recipe book. He's the head chef of Molto or of Cooking Pal, which owns Molto. And um, he loads five new recipes a week on this tablet. So there's constant new recipes being rolled out. This is one of his. We're falling in love with his recipes one by one. They're so good. They're so methodically tested and tried and true. Like, I love this gnocchi dough. Jamie, if you're on, another winner, buddy. I just really love it. It's like the perfect texture. So one of the big things you get with the Molto is just this endless stream of content. Unbelievable, which I love. All right, so we've got our dumplings. I'm just making some space here because at this point, we do want to bust out the big puppy, the big mama jamba, a saute pan. Now, you can saute in the molto. You just can't do these dumplings in the molto, though. There's just not enough surface area. So you do want to get a good big pan. Now, for this gnocchi recipe, we're not boiling them. Most gnocchi you put into, like, boiling pasta water, salted water. You take it out. And then you can kind of dress it with sauces and things like that. Today, we're just pan frying, which I really love. How are we doing, Kaya? Anything I need to address? 
No, everything's really cool right now. All right, cool. Now, I, guys, I have some more over here. I'm just going to kind of keep them all in one spot so you guys can see. But I just wanted to make sure you guys can see. I made a couple ahead of time. Again, you can see these ones are a little bit bigger. Still stuffed with that little bit of spinach. Cream cheese. The key is just adding enough flour over the top that they don't stick to each other. And I just love the way this looks. Look how beautiful that is. Like, gorgeous pile of rustic gnocchi. So let's just talk real quick as this pan, I'm just heating up this pan, medium high heat. Let's talk about mashed potatoes because you guys have, a, probably I'm hoping, mashed potatoes is on the menu. I will say a couple tips about mashed potatoes. My mom just called me today on my way into the studio and she was like, can I make mashed potatoes today? And the answer is yes. You can make mashed potatoes today or tomorrow. I always like to fold in some mayo. Towel drop. What did he just say? Like a tablespoon or two of mayo into the mash. It keeps it very, very fluffy and moist if you make it the day before. It won't affect the flavor. No one will know the difference, but it will make the texture light as air. So if you are making mashed potatoes today or tomorrow, go with like, you know, for every cup of mashed potatoes, add about a tablespoon of mayonnaise. And you can eye it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But that mayonnaise will add a lot of nice moisture and fat to keep it from just getting really hard like a rock. Now, let's pretend it's Saturday and you are turkeyed out. You can't watch any more football. If you see another family member, you're going to scream. Like, that's where we're all at mentally. But you have like some mashed potatoes, maybe a cup or two in the fridge. And you're like, wait a second. I remember Joel cooking this amazing gnocchi. Can I do that with this? Yes. Add that to a bowl. Follow the recipe we gave you. Crack an egg. We put a little cheese in there. We put a little bit of nutmeg in there. And you can make a dough ball out of mashed potatoes. Now, there's cream in mashed potatoes and butter. It's going to be fine. It still works great. And you can do this exact technique. You don't have to stuff it. You can pan fry them like we're about to do. Does that help? Any questions on the mashed potato lecture or monologue? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's kind of timely. We should be talking about mashed potatoes. All right. Cool. So here's our pan. Again, this is the one tool we've had to bust out beyond the molto for this recipe, which I just love. That's why we love that molto. And I'm going to add enough olive oil. You do not need to measure this to kind of coat the bottom of the pan. We're going to pan fry these. So they are fried, not deep fried, just pan fried. And it really soaks up a lot of oil because there's obviously a lot of potato and flour in these little dumplings. But I'm just kind of adding them one at a time. And you want to make sure they have a little bit of space. Yes. And I'm about a 7 out of 10 right now on heat. Look at these cute little pillows of love. Who doesn't want this? I remember when I studied in Italy, we went out for gnocchi one night. And they were like, it came in a, almost like cereal. It looked like cereal. It was like a bowl. And there were like these little pearls in it, like tapioca almost. And it was like a bowl of tapioca. And I'm like, no, no, I, I ordered the gnocchi. They go, that's gnocchi. And I'm like, no, no, like pillows like this. They go, no, no. It was like little marbles. And I ate it, and it was like a semolina dough. It was so different, and I loved it. I loved it, but it's not what I thought gnocchi was. Again, gnocchi is lump, so it doesn't need to look like this, right? It really, gnocchi has so many different versions. When you go to Italy, it doesn't always be a pillow of, of potato, but hey, nothing wrong with that. All right, so I'm kind of swirling these around, and I'm just cooking these kind of on one side until they're golden brown, and then you can grab a little spatula, and just start kind of flipping them. And you want to flip them early like this before they're too brown because they'll start to kind of build a little crust and then you can start to really swirl them around the pan and get them more evenly coated in the hot oil. Come on, baby. You don't want to flip. There you go. And you want to be delicate. I mean, these are, these are little dough balls. You really don't want to flip for me. There we go. And you can, you know, it might just be better. Go to the fork. There we go. See, even that one got a little bit too brown before. It's going to get that brown, all of them. But at this point, 
you want to flip them nice and early so they can kind of swirl around the pan like this. That looks really good. All right, and you just want to keep kind of moving that pan. And you can see the cream cheese kind of spilling out, making its own little injected sauce. You can see the potatoes crisping up, the spinach kind of doing its thing. You don't really want to flip this, right? You just more want to roll these because they're delicate. They're really, really delicate. Oh, this looks so good. Beautiful. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Where's my salt? Where's my salt? It's hiding. There we go. You just want to add a little salt while it's still in the hot oil so it can kind of stick to the dumplings. And I'm just kind of like babysit these. These are also really great. They're very chefy, but they're really easy for turning things. Yes, Chef Kaya, talk to me. We got a question from MJ. All right, MJ. Hi. Hey. Earlier, you had said um, if you freeze it when they're already formed, and you said that from the freezer you would boil them? Yeah. So you boil them instead of pan frying them? You can boil them instead of pan frying them in typical gnocchi. That's how you do it. But you can also go straight from the freezer into the pan like we're doing. So okay. typical gnocchi, yeah, it's kind of like pasta. You boil them and then you do sauce. But today we're just pan frying. But okay. either way, it can go right from the freezer into the pan or the pot, depending on what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Look at these guys. Oh, those are getting so good. And now, the one thing I will say about these is they're brown. I mean, they're golden brown. They're beautiful, but they're brown. So when you're plating something brown, something fried and stuff, Kaya and I were talking about what to plate it on, and I always think a little bit of color is nice. So grab like a bright green or maybe an off pink, or I like um, this nice blue, and it just really makes that gnocchi shine and kind of all your hard work really come through. Again, I don't, like, we have some here that look perfect, like these, right? These look perfect. Like, they look like little machine-built dumplings. And then I've got, like, a disaster happening over here. They're all going to taste the same. They are going to be amazing, and they look homemade. And that is why we're called homemade. We celebrate those imperfections. We celebrate that hand-touched quality to food, because you know what? That's the kind of food I want to nestle up to. But I will say... Hello! That looks pretty freaking insane. I'm going to hold this to the side so you guys can see it. Come on. Get out of town with this. It's just so good. Golden brown on the outside, spinach, everything on the inside, all made within the molto. Okay, now we're, now we're starting to cook with fire. You guys can start to see they're starting to really get golden brown and really start to kind of find their their color. And these are really, um, I would say, on the, the final finish line here. Now, I want to call out again. If you're interested in this Malta, you saw how it worked. Go to their website. We're putting it in the chat. But cookingpal.com, Cooking Pal is the overall brand, and it owns Malta. But you can go buy the Malta. Again, gift with HM is the promo code. Gift with HM. You get $80 off, and then... This Black Friday, guys, a free $210 bowl. This guy. 210 bucks. That's how much that's worth. Worth it. That's all I got to say. All right. Now, I don't just pour these out. That's a mistake because all that oil comes out with it. So I do like to grab a spoon or you can use your tongs. But I just kind of grab a spoon and I start just laying these little dumplings out. Oh, they're so cute. And you better believe I'll show you how to finish these guys. But these as like a little appetizer. I mean, honestly, a main course, I'd serve a salad with this. I'd treat it like pasta. But if you have leftover mashed potatoes, you have no real excuse to not try this this weekend. These are such an easy win. Look at that. Make sure you guys can kind of see everything here. Come on. Now, a couple options here. If you know me, you know we're going with more cheese. Okay? If pasta hits the plate, 
the cheese comes out to play. All right, I don't do that. The only time that doesn't happen is last Friday, if you, if you missed it, by the way, you have to go on our website, homemadecooking.com. Last Friday, we did a seafood class. We did a clams puttanesca with pasta. Now, if seafood's in the pasta, cheese, cheese hands, hold on standby. That was unbelievable. If you missed it, check it out. But for this, spinach and potatoes and all that good stuff, yeah, hello, cheese. It's happening. So I get a little bit more of that fresh parm and just right over the top. Make sure you get some on the edges so when you scrape them, they kind of go over that. I grab some good quality olive oil and I just kind of drizzle. And I'll show you guys what this looks like here. That is spinach stuffed gnocchi. Made with so few appliances in our molto, but what a pleasure. What a different, beautiful take. We have a little bit of chopped thyme here. You can add that if you need a little bit more greenery. You can add some basil. Maybe some mint would be really good. Some fresh clock pepper. But man, that's pretty much everything I need in life. Big pile of spinach stuffed dumplings. All right, before I just face plant into this, how we doing? We got one more question from MJ. Yeah, MJ, keep them coming. Bring them. I love it. Oh, you there? Oh, you're, you're still muted, MJ. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> what is your preferred oil for cooking the gnocchi? Why do I prefer oil? No, what is the preferred oil? Oh, I use olive oil. I just don't heat it up so high. My, my general rule of thumb is with olive oil, you don't want to heat it up insanely high. You start to lose the flavor. So this stayed at about a 7 out of 10. You still get great flavor from that olive oil. So olive oil is my preferred oil. You can use an avocado oil or a vegetable oil if that's all you've got. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for asking great questions today from Miss MJ. She should win a prize. All right. Let's try, shall we? I mean, <laughs> come on. Mm. Wow. I'm telling you, I'm calling out Chef Jamie, who made this recipe. It's part of the Cooking Pal and Molto fleet. It's so good. It's so good. It's so worth it. One more. Sorry, I got to. I mean, they're just little pillows of love. I mean, look at the caramelization on this one. It's almost like shiny. I mean, it's like stunning. It's like literally a crust. Oh, so good. Mmm. Mmm. You could do a little lemon. If you wanted to go crazy, you could layer on other sauces. Like you could do a beautiful pomodoro. You could do a gorgonzola sauce over something like this. It doesn't have to just be just the simple dumplings. But we're kind of a purist when it comes to this. I mean, it really doesn't need much. I'm grabbing a little glug here. It is so good. Guys, spinach stuff gnocchi. Again, what would have been like 10 appliances done in one from scratch, homemade, done the right way. If you want to save a lot of space, if you want to save a lot of time, and you almost want like an automatic robot sous chef in your kitchen, check it out, cookingpal.com. Again, use our code, gift with HM. No brainer, $80 off. We've had a lot of people look at it, explore it. I think some people have bought. So we want you guys to be armed with this thing. This is the future, but it's also, it's kind of the past. Like we have, this has been proven in culture after culture. So check it out. More than anything, um, we're 48 hours away from Thanksgiving. You guys are going to all get an email from me tomorrow expressing what I'm about to express. But for those of you who are on right now, it's been about two and a half years since homemade has been a thing. And it's my absolute dream to have a cooking school that reaches as many people as possible to really inspire people to cook. And it just wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't for this incredible community that signs on. Whether you're new here, whether you come regularly, we so appreciate you. 
And there's a million places you can find cooking now. You can watch it on Netflix and on websites and on YouTube and anywhere. But you choose to come to Homemade. And we're so, so grateful for that. So with Thanksgiving around the corner, we just want to say thank you. We're so grateful for you, your time, your energy, and we love you. And we're really excited to see you after the holiday when we're all ready to lose weight <laughs> and find some lighter recipes in our repertoire. But until then, happy cooking. Enjoy Thursday. And we will catch you next week. Take care, everybody.